Hello YouTube, Bane666 here. So just the other day I published a video in which I said that the men's rights movement has gained a lot of ground in a short period of time. It was just four or five years ago the typical feminist response to men's issues would be men don't have issues or men's issues aren't important. But over that four or five years, there's been a shift. And now, whenever feminists try to shit all over men's rights activists, they have to start by acknowledging that men actually do have some legitimate issues that need to be addressed. And the article I'm looking at today is an example of that. Uh, a big thanks to Otterface for sending it to me on Twitter. So the article is on everyday feminism. And it's called Four MRA Arguments That Actually Have a Point and Where They Go Wrong. Oh, well, at least she's talking about some of the issues. That's a start. So without any further delay, let's get stuck into it. When I first learned about men's rights activists, MRAs, a group of people aimed at giving men access to the same opportunities as other genders, I didn't realize they had a reputation for being anti-feminist. In fact, a lot of their ideas seem pretty feminist to me. Okay, one of the big criticisms I have for modern day online journalism is really, really sloppy citations. Uh, what happens is the journalist makes a claim and they'll have a link to a citation. And when you go and check the citation, usually the citation doesn't say what the um, the journalist is claiming it says it doesn't back up their claim at all and I have to say the author of this particular article Susanna um, is particularly good at this bad habit she has a number of citations which do not back up what she says or link to really really bad citations now her claim that men's rights activists are anti-feminist is in fact true and i'll address that in a minute but let's have a look at her first citation it's called why the mra manosphere isn't actually helping men cope with rejection so the title itself is inaccurate first of all mra and manosphere are not interchangeable all right MR men's rights activists are part of the manosphere the same way france is part of europe but all of europe is not France, okay? They're not interchangeable, they're not synonymous. Men's rights activists aren't the entirety of the manosphere, and that's the entire premise of this article. And even the fact that it says, helping men cope with rejection, I mean, that, that sounds like they're talking about the pickup artists there. And if we, we scroll down into the article, we get, what is the manosphere? Just like there are multiple feminisms, there are multiple versions of pro-man anti-feminist philosophies in the male-centric online community collectively known as the Manosphere. Yeah, that so far so good. You know how intersectional feminist and womanism can have some overlap, so can some of the ideas of the Manosphere. Yeah, okay. So far so good, That that's not incorrect. However, to avoid conflating all of the men's rights groups here's a quick vocabulary lesson yeah the thing is they're not all men's rights groups um, the men's rights movement is a men's rights group the others are not yet the author goes on to claim that you know we have MRAs we have the red pill we have pickup artists, uh, MGTOW, and so on and so forth. So she just claims that they're all all men's rights groups. Pickup artists are MRAs, apparently. So this is an incredibly bad citation, Susanna. An incredibly bad citation. And it's a mistake that you yourself make in a little while in another one of your citations, but we'll get to that in a minute. But before we go on, I would just like to say why MRAs are anti-feminist. Now, I'm sure this is going to come up a few times while I'm debunking this article. There are many reasons why. Uh, if you want a long, detailed examination of men's issues and how feminists 
often stand in our way, I recommend that you watch my Responding to Garrett series, which, a word of warning, is over 10 hours long, but it's full of citations and evidence and arguments in great detail, which I'm not going to repeat here for obvious reasons. But more often than not, there are feminist groups standing in our way. When it comes to child custody, we have now fighting against shared custody, the largest feminist organization in the world. When it comes to acknowledging that men can be rape victims of women, we have a feminist group in Israel which stopped the law being changed to accept that females can be rapists. This And, and this isn't a, you know, a small group of tumble of feminists or something. This is a feminist group with power which is affecting governmental change or stopping governmental change. That's standing in our way. When we try to have talks at universities about male suicide, we have fucking protests and the talks being shut down by feminist groups. And then there is the slander and misinformation and bullshit constantly spread about us. Like this little gem from earlier in the week. Because they are denying men their natural rights as men. Meaning, if only we could just have sex with whoever and whatever we want, whenever we want, then maybe we wouldn't have to rape you. So that was a feminist gender studies professor at a Canadian university, from a Canadian university, who was invited on national Canadian TV to talk about men's rights activists. And her conclusion was that we think the solution to all our problems is to, to rape women or to have the right to rape women. Now, I have to ask Susanna, in all honesty, when there is bullshit like that, and, and that's nothing unique, by the way, that type of shit is slung at us all the time. When there's bullshit like that, how exactly are we meant to work with feminists? How exactly are we meant to not criticize feminism when it comes out with fucking bullshit like that? Are we supposed to just ignore it and hope that it goes away? Because let me tell you, that doesn't work. But when we criticize it, then, you know, we're, we're criticized as uh, misogynists who apparently hate women because we're defending ourselves from bullshit fucking allegations. Now, I know Susanna's response to this. She actually makes it later in the article, and that is not all feminists, which is an interesting philosophy. Mind you, I, I agree. Not all feminists are like that. I agree 100% but it seems that whenever you talk to a feminist they have the opinion that all MRAs are like that and they usually give examples of people who aren't MRAs which is why the previous article that Susanna links to is such a problem. Mind you I have to admit that article isn't as bad as a lot I've seen because it does at least break the different groups up and describes them as opposed to just lumping them all together but it's still an issue to refer to them as men's rights groups because that very thing is constantly used to demonize us by falsely associating us with groups who are not fucking associated with us it's just one big massive straw man and like i said we see susanna do exactly that in a little while but for now, let's go back to the article. They wanted men to have the chance to be caretakers as well as breadwinners. They wanted all crime victims to be taken seriously. They wanted an end to stereotypes. But once I became known to MRAs as a feminist, many let me know they weren't on my side. I started getting angry tweets complaining about how women ruled the world and men were oppressed. Ah, the men's rights activists claim that they're oppressed. Uh... <laughs> fallacy um yeah I, I have to laugh at this one every time i see it and she actually repeats it numerous times throughout the article as we'll see let me give you a tip susanna if someone is tweeting at you that they are oppressed they are not a men's rights activist we do not go around claiming that we are oppressed okay that is what feminists do and then when we talk about our issues, they project that word onto us. They think that if men say, hey, we have issues too, 
not only we have issues, but we have issues too, they somehow interpret that as men are oppressed by women because they see the world through the lens of oppressor oppressed. There has to be an oppressive class and an oppressed class. This is feminist ideology right here, which we do not subscribe to. The way we see the world is men have issues, women have issues. Some men have advantages, some women have advantages. Some men have disadvantages, some women have disadvantages. Okay? Not one group oppressing the other. But at the same time, men's issues are ignored, diminished, dismissed, or not talked about. That's why men's rights activists exist because these issues are not being talked about. They're not even known by many people in the mainstream. And saying, hey, can, can we talk about this issue? Can we bring awareness to this issue and maybe get something done about it? That's not claiming to be oppressed. I, I'm so sick and tired of seeing the word oppressed thrown at us by feminists in articles. Constantly. It's a word we don't use. It's a thing we don't fucking claim. Okay, but let's continue. A few even used sexist insults against me. I ignored them for the most part, but when I tried to engage with them, they seemed more interested in trolling me than exchanging ideas. Okay, so we have a couple of claims here by Susanna. One is that MRA's tweet at her saying that they're oppressed, and another is that they use sexist insults against her. Now, let's be clear. She's claiming that these come from men's rights activists. And then she has a link to an article she has written where she tried to engage with uh, men's rights activists. And in her opinion, they were more, interest in, more interested in trolling her than actually exchanging ideas. So let's once again go have a look at her citation and see if this is in any way accurate. Now, just a word of warning, I'm actually going to spend a fair bit of time on this particular citation because it's by the same author, and it's a key point to her argument that she apparently knows MRAs and has apparently engaged with MRAs, so she somehow knows what she's talking about. So let's, let's spend a bit of time on this ExoJane article, once again by the same author, and, and see exactly how accurate it is. So the name of the article is, I spent a month thoughtfully engaging with my anti-feminist critics online and it was pretty terrible. And the subheading is, stereotypes of MRAs and internet trolls are confronting, but are they true? So you'll note that the article is about anti-feminists, it's about MRAs, and it's about internet trolls. And they're all just mixed in together. And we see this throughout the article. Whenever she mentions men's rights activists, it's always MRAs and something. So it'll be interesting to look at her examples and to see how many of them are actually MRAs. I think we should keep a bit of a count, actually, because if she's constantly talking about MRAs in the article, then you would want at least a couple of MRAs as examples, right? That, that would be fair. That would be proper journalism. Now, you'll note in this paragraph that she's talking specifically about men's rights activists and the men's rights movement, and she's getting allegations specifically from MRAs of man-hating, right? So these allegations have specifically come from MRAs. Once again, the allegation of harassment from specifically MRAs. Now, this particular paragraph, she starts off by talking about the ugly side of men's rights activism, so once again, I, I hope she gives us lots and lots of examples considering what she's talking about MRAs. And then she finishes off the, the article by saying, uh, sorry, finishes off the paragraph by saying the stereotypes of MRAs and internet trolls. So she's, she's lumped MRAs and internet trolls in together, which is convenient because now she can just give us examples of internet trolls, right, without actually giving us examples of MRAs even though MRAs are the focus of the article, clearly. So in this paragraph, she says she decided that for a month she would go against her better judgment and reply to her internet trolls. Note the word trolls, right? But she finishes the paragraph by saying, 
Or would our interaction simply confirm what feminists often assert, that MRAs are just an anti-woman hate group? So once again, trolls and MRAs are just lumped in together because she's replying to her trolls, right? So the trolls must be MRAs. That's the logic here. So once again, I'm, I'm hoping we get lots of good examples of actual MRAs who are trolling her. What do you think the result's going to be, folks? Do you think we're going to get lots of examples of MRAs? I'll, I'll, let, you, um, I'll let you guess. Now, this paragraph, she starts off by saying, In my conversations with MRAs and other anti-feminist critics. So once again, MRAs and anti-feminists lumped in together makes it easy to give examples of anti-feminists and just pass them off as MRAs, right? Now, once again, every time she mentions some other group like anti-feminists or trolls or whatever, it's, it's always with MRAs. So, once again, there should be lots of examples of MRAs doing this, right? And she says here, if I was going to dismiss men's rights activists and self-identified egalitarians as mere misogynists, I'd first give them the chance to prove otherwise. I let people know I valued their perspectives, even when they made it clear they didn't value mine. Okay, so once again, she's talking about MRAs. Let's be fucking crystal clear on that. So the first example she gives us is a conversation she had with a guy called Mike. Now, I actually contacted Mike on Twitter. He was a little bit surprised that he had appeared in a feminist article. So I asked him point blank, are, are you an MRA? And he said, not at all accurate. He also said that he would like to add that he doesn't have anything racist in his timeline, as she claimed. And he said if, if he does, it's a retweet of a joke or something. Okay, so, you know, she claimed he was racist. He claims he's not. But regardless of that, he's not an MRA. So... We are zero for one, Susanna. But, you know, there's still lots of article to go through. And I'm going to say the conversation with Mike isn't overly offensive. I, I don't see how he's trolling or, you know, calling you sexist names or claiming to be oppressed or any of the other things that you, you claim to get. Um, considering you claim these things in articles, I would expect that you would give examples of these things as opposed to a conversation with someone where you just disagreed. And she says here that he's, the guy's Twitter feed was full of fatphobic, racist, and pro-Gamergate tweets. Well, hey, if he's pro-Gamergate, he must be an MRA, right? Yeah, sure. Now, the next one she goes on to is someone called Texas Drive, who I sent a tweet to asking if he's an MRA. I, at this point, I have not heard back from him. Uh, I suspect I probably won't. If I do hear back, I will do an update later in this video or the next one. But looking through the people he follows on Twitter, uh, there is not a single MRA or even an anti-feminist anywhere. So I think this guy probably disagrees with homosexuality based on the conversation. That does not make him an MRA, Susanna. In fact, we, we are friendly towards trans people and homosexuals. Okay, there are trans and gay uh, MRAs, in case you're unaware of that, Susanna. So, this guy is not an MRA. And to be fair, after I tweeted him, I noticed that in fine print down the bottom, she's got not a men's rights activist, as far as I can tell. Just an opponent of the gay lifestyle. So, I mean, that that's a perfect example to, to have in an article where you constantly talk about engaging with MRAs, right? Susanna, you, you include an example <laughs> you admit is not an MRA. So that, that would be zero for two so far. You're really not doing well so far, Susanna. But, but you know, we've still got a little, little way to go. So <laughs> who knows? Maybe, maybe the rest of the examples are MRAs. What do you think, folks? <laughs> what do you reckon? So the next one she says is a pickup artist so i didn't even bother messaging this guy uh if he's a pickup artist he's not an mra so zero for three susanna <laughs> really not doing too good especially considering how many times you mention 
MRAs in the article. Not a single example so far. Uh, and then she said she moved on to her less civil critics. And there's someone here called Mr. Bunny Lemmikins. So once again, I tweeted Mr. Bunny Lemmikins. And at this point, I have not got a reply. Now, I did go through all the 1,597 people that Mr. Bunny Lemmikins is following. And uh, as far as I can tell, the only... MRA Mr. Bunny Lemmikins follows is Blair White. Uh, now, maybe Mr. Bunny Lemmikins is following Blair White because he's an MRA, or maybe because of uh, maybe Mr. Bunny Lemmikins is transgender. After all, uh, he does follow hashtag LGBT, or maybe Mr. Bunny Lemmikins is following Blair White because she's anti feminist, or maybe for one of, I don't know hundreds of other reasons who knows maybe he liked one of her tweets at one point but that's the only MRA that I can find out of the 1597 people that he's following doesn't say he's an MRA in the info about him I should point out that Mr. Bunny Lamekins isn't following Karen Strawn or myself or Paul Elam or a voice for men or Cassie J, or Dr. Random McCam, or the Red Pill movie, or any other major MRA apart from Blair White, which makes me think that he's not an MRA. I, I think he would be following at least a couple of those people mentioned. And having a quick look through his feed, it, it doesn't seem like there's any men's rights stuff there. So unless he contacts me and and confirms that he is an actual MRA, I'm going to put him in no camp. And if you think I'm wrong, Susanna, by all means, you want to provide evidence that this guy's an MRA, by all means, please do so. Okay, so before going on to the next <clears throat> MRA example, she said, and then I realized I don't even do anything online to make people feel bad. I don't snoop on MRA's Twitter feeds in search of opportunities to disparage them i don't know any feminists who do i don't even usually argue with the opponents who seek me out okay i can name quite a few feminists who do uh susanna let me introduce you to take down mras one of the most dishonest pieces of shit on twitter and what this asshole does is he basically goes through the, the internet and he finds any anyone who he dislikes, anyone making a, a sexist or racist, misogynistic comment, and he, he just assumes that they're a men's rights activist. He just attributes men's rights activism to them and then uses them as an example of how bad we are. This guy is a dishonest piece of shit and he has 10,000 followers on Twitter. And he actively seeks us out to shit all over us. So I'm happy to put him up against the handful of tweets you have from non-MRAs any day, Susanna. Once again, this is one of the reasons why we don't get along with feminists. It's because of assholes like this who go around lying about us. Who spend all their fucking time misrepresenting us at every opportunity. So before the next example, she has another paragraph in which he's talking about trolls, right? Because apparently that word is interchangeable with MRAs, right? So the next example is uh, Mike again, like I said earlier, not an MRA. Next example is someone called Kevin Geary. Now, once again, I contacted Kevin Geary and at this point have not heard back. He's following 505 people. And as far as I can tell, there is not a single men's rights activist amongst them. Definitely not uh, any major MRAs like Karen, Paul, myself, Dr. Randa McCam, the Honey Badgers, Cassie J, the Red Pill. And you would expect out of 500 odd people he's following, there would be at least one prominent MRA if he is in fact a men's rights activist. It, it would be strange that... There is not a single one there. As far as I can tell, there's not even any anti-feminists, at least well-known anti-feminists, which you would also expect. So it seems that this guy isn't even interested in the, the whole 
gender politics debate, as far as I can tell. Once again, Susanna, if you can provide evidence to show that this guy is an actual MRA, I'll be glad to make a correction. Or if he contacts me and uh, confirms that he is an actual MRA, once again, I'll make a correction. But until then, I think it's pretty safe to say that there is no evidence to suggest that this guy is in any way an MRA or, it seems, even an anti-feminist. So remember, folks, so far we have not had one single MRA as an example, even though the article continuously mentions men's rights activists. She has not given us a single MRA example. So we have one example left. It's a woman. Let's, let's see if she is, in fact, an MRA. Now, once again, I did contact Maggie. She actually seems like a pretty cool person. I had a bit of a conversation with her. And when I asked her if she was a men's, an MRA, her response was, what the fuck is an MRA? So, <laughs> so, so well done. Well done, Susanna. Well done. You have not supplied us with a single men's rights activist as an example of how you interacted with men's rights activists online for a month. And Maggie told me the only type of activism she's ever done is as a member of the Pink Pistols, which, as far as I can tell, is a female self-defense gun rights group. I'm, I'm not exactly sure, and it's really not that relevant because they're not a men's rights group. Although I'm sure there's some feminist article out there claiming that they are, <laughs> right? Because yeah, apparently anyone who isn't a feminist is a, an MRA. So, Susanna, you, you really failed in this article. Uh, considering in the main article I'm debunking, you claim that we've used sexist insults against you and we're claiming to be oppressed. And then in this article here, you, you claim to have interacted with us for a month, yet you have not shown a single example of any of that anywhere. And, but then after these examples, she goes on to say, granted, these people don't represent all anti-feminists or men's rights activists. They aren't even all men's rights activists, to be clear. Yeah. Do you know why they aren't all men's rights activists, Susanna? Because none of them are. Not a single one. And by all means, please prove me wrong. Show us some evidence that just one of these people is a men's rights activist. Just a single one, by all means. I would love to see the evidence. And she finishes off the, the article with, uh, with this paragraph. Are men's rights activists just an anti-women hate group? I can't speak to all of them, but the ones who troll women online are definitely pretty harmful. Shame you didn't give us any examples of that, Susanna. Not a single fucking example of that, right? And for no apparent reason. On the other hand, I don't see feminists tagging MRAs on Twitter to tell them they're underfucked or call them fat. Really? Well, we see that all the time, Susanna. We see that constantly. I'll give you some examples. Feminists and MRAs may be adversaries, but for the most part, only one side is playing dirty no matter how clean their target's game is. Yeah, I agree. I agree with you 100% here, Susanna. Only one side is playing dirty, and it's not us. Let me play you the clip from the gender studies professor once again talking about us. Because they are denying men their natural rights as men. Meaning, if only we could just have sex with whoever and whatever we want, whenever we want, then maybe we wouldn't have to rape you. Now, that's about as dirty as you can get. Not to mention articles which claim to be about us, but don't use a single example, not a single example of actual MRAs. I would call that pretty dirty too, Susanna. Or, although, to be fair, it could just be lazy journalism. Now, I'm willing to give you a challenge, Susanna, if by any chance you're actually watching this. If you ever want to talk to an actual MRA, have a live chat on YouTube, I'm, I'm more than willing to talk to you. Or if you're not willing to talk to me because 
you think this video is a bit snarky. Mind you, I think there's good reason for it to be snarky. But if you think I'm a bit too snarky, I know plenty of other MRAs who would be willing to talk to you, have a reasonable, civil conversation. And for the record, that's something I've done in the past with reasonable, open-minded feminists. On numerous occasions, we've had pleasant, decent conversations. Not name-calling, not yelling, not abuse, talking about actual issues. So there's the challenge. You want to have a chat to an actual MRA, I'm available, and so are many others. Right? That's, that's if, you're actually, if you actually care about the truth and evidence and facts, as opposed to spinning a narrative. Now, if you just want to spin a narrative, by all means, continue with this rubbish. Continue claiming that people who aren't MRAs are MRAs. Continue claiming that you receive uh, sexual abuse and, and MRAs claiming that they're oppressed and then show absolutely no evidence for it. But if you keep doing that, I'm going to be there to expose you. Anyway, this video has run rather long and we barely got through the original article, so I'm going to pick it up in part two. And I'm not finished yet. Uh, two quick things before I go. The first one is a correction. Uh, although I didn't get anything wrong, I did leave something out when I was going through the article and doing the live read. I did miss one of the examples she gave. It was tucked in under the Kevin Geary example. I actually thought it was part of the Kevin Geary example, which is why I missed it. But basically, it's a guy who talks about nice guys. Okay, so uh, not a men's rights issue. So we can take the number up from six non-MRA examples to seven. Now, it's interesting here that Susanna says, these people were eager to criticize me, but not to have an actual conversation, even when I gave them the floor. Keep that in mind. I should also point out in the Kevin Geary example she gave, she says to him that she writes not to bitch but to inform and that she welcomes feedback if anything in particular is inaccurate. Now this is important for my next point because I did send Susanna a tweet. I said in the tweet, just curious why your XO Jane article about MRAs had zero MRAs as examples. So remember, this is someone who claims she wants a conversation and she's she welcomes feedback. And uh, if anything's inaccurate, she wants it pointed out to her. And her reaction to my tweet was to block me. So, so much for a conversation and uh, MRAs and at least some feminists working together, right? 